Hello and welcome. In the previous lesson, we understood how to generate surface and volume mesh for a Formula SAE car. In this lesson, we will learn how to set up a CFD simulation to compute the external flow over a Formula SAE car for aerodynamic analysis using ANSYS Fluent. We will achieve this by learning how to set reference values, how to set up cell zones and boundary conditions, how to decide viscous model, how to define different graphics objects for analyzing the results and much more. So without further delay, let's get started. Before going into the simulation, let's quickly define the problem. In this simulation, we'll consider the air flow over an FSA car moving at 35 miles per hour. For simulating the rotation of the wheel, we will be using a simple rotating wall boundary condition. On the other hand, as we saw in the previous lessons, separate fluid regions have been created and placed around the wheel rims to facilitate the usage of MRF approach for modeling the rotation of these wheel rims. This is because having open spaces across the wheel center due to presence of these wheel rims leads to axial flow across the wheel in addition to tangential component. As rotating walls only models tangential component of the flow, using MRF for the wheel rims and rotating walls for modeling tire motion is recommended for better accuracy and reduced complexity. Based on the radius of the wheel and the MRF zones, wheels will be rotating using rotating walls condition with angular velocity of 60.6 radians per second and MRF cell zone will be rotated using moving reference frame having angular velocity of 60.6 radians per second as computed from the formula shown on the screen. Air will enter the inlet at the speed of 35 miles per hour that is 15.65 meters per second and exit the domain from the outlet. The ground will be given a translating wall boundary condition with speed same as of the air. We will apply a specified zero shear stress condition to the wheel patches, side and top walls of the domain. All other walls and the symmetry plane will have default boundary conditions. Since we have now defined the problem, let's see how we can set this up in ANSYS Fluent Solver. If you are following along with the meshing lesson and haven't yet closed the Fluent session, you can now simply use the switch to solution button from the meshing mode to directly open the solver. If not, launch ANSYS Fluent in solution mode. Select as many processes as needed and make sure to check double precision. We will use 16 processes in our demo. Load the provided mesh file that we have generated in the previous lesson. Once the mesh is loaded, let's display the mesh. Now perform the mesh check. We can see that the mesh check task is completed without any error. Next, let's evaluate the mesh quality. In the console window, we can see the minimum orthogonal quality is in the acceptable range. As mesh check and mesh quality operations have reported no issues, we are good to proceed further and start setting up the solver. Let's move on to the physics tab. In the solver group, under general, we will keep all the default selections that is steady state simulation using the pressure based solver. In operating conditions, the operating pressure is set to atmospheric pressure and gravity is not selected. Next, moving to the reference values, we will update some of the values to get correct values of various coefficients. In the area field, we need to calculate the frontal area of the FSAE car. This reference area is used by ANSYS Fluent to calculate the values of various coefficients such as lift and drag. 
For this, we will use the projected surface area option under the reports group of the results tab. Open the projected surface area dialog box. Select all the FSI car surfaces. Projection direction will be X direction. Click Compute. We see a value displayed here. This projected area also depends on the minimum feature size. Keep reducing the value of the feature size to a point where projected area does not change much and use that value. Check for 1, 0 0.001. and 0 0.0005. We see that there is not much difference in the area value now. So let's set the area in the reference value to 0.62. For length, we will enter 3.09 meter, which is the car length. And for velocity, we will give the value as 15.65 meters per second, which is the flow velocity. Now let's discuss the viscous model to be used for this simulation. The Reynolds number based on the car's length and air as fluid material using the formula shown here comes up to be 3.3 .3 into 10 raised to 6. For external flows, we can classify the flow as turbulent based on this Reynolds number. So we need to use an appropriate turbulence model to solve the problem accurately. For that, click on viscous. For most simulations, the default K omega model is robust enough to solve the problem. For this simulation also, we will keep the default K omega selected. Now we can also keep the default SHT selected under the K omega model, but since this is comparatively complex simulation, we will choose Geeko here as this model provides the flexibility to tune the model over a wide range of flow scenarios. Geeko stands for generalized K omega. Its formulation consists of free coefficients that can be varied to tune the model to different flow scenarios. A deep discussion on Geeko is beyond the scope of this lesson. Please refer to the user guide for more details. However, in this lesson, we will specifically understand the coefficient called CSEP. CSEP parameter is used to optimize flow separation from smooth surfaces. Its range is from 0.7 to 2.5. Increasing CSEP reduces eddy viscosity leading to more sensitivity to adverse pressure gradients for boundary layers. We will be setting CSEP equal to 1 based on numerous previous studies that indicate more accurate force prediction with this value for automotive external aerodynamic simulations. Additionally, let's select curvature correction as we have many curved surfaces in our FSI car model. Click OK. Moving on to the materials, we will use air with default properties. Next, in zones group, select cell zones. In addition to the main fluid domain, there are two more fluid MRF regions. We need to give frame motion to these two MRF zones. Click edit for the front MRF zone. Select frame motion and enter the rotation origin axis points as shown. Please note that these coordinates are deduced at the CAD generation stage itself. Enter rotation axis direction as shown. These are obtained by applying the right hand thumb rule. Enter the angular velocity that we have calculated earlier. Click apply and close the window. Follow similar steps for rare MRF zone.
Now we will move to the boundary conditions. Here group the surfaces by zone type and check if everything is listed under correct zone type. Select inlet and click edit. Change the velocity magnitude to 15.65 meters per second and click apply by keeping other values as default. Select outlet and click edit. Check if the gauge pressure is zero and leave other values default and click apply. In the walls, select front wheels and click on edit. Select moving walls, rotational and enter the values as shown. These values are the same as the respective MRF zones. Enter 60.6 for speed. Keeping rest as default, click apply and close the window. Let's follow the same process for rear wheel. Once it is done, click apply and close the window. Now let's move to the walls of the enclosure. Select ground and click edit. Select moving wall, translation and enter the directions and speed as shown. Click apply and close the window. Select side wall and click edit. Keep this as stationary wall and select specified shear to satisfy zero shear case. This setting is used to simulate a free slip wall condition. Keep all the values default, click apply and close the window. Let's copy the boundary condition given to the side wall, the top wall, front patch and rear patch as well. Click on front MRF. Edit. Since relative to adjacent cell zone is already selected, this means the surface will move relative to the respective MRF cell zone and as we do not want to make any additional changes here, we will close this window. Same is the case with the rare MRF. Now let's set up the solution. Click on methods. In this case, we will use all the default selections. Also, for the controls, we will use default values. Now, let's define some reports for lift and drag forces. Click on definitions, new, force report, drag. Change the name as shown. Select drag force. Set appropriate directions that is x equal to 1 and select all the FSA car surfaces. Take report file, report plot and print to console then click OK. Let's follow similar steps to define lift force. Here, the direction will be perpendicular to the flow, that is, y will be equal to 1. Click OK to close the window. Next task is initialization. For this simulation, we'll use hybrid initialization. Select hybrid initialization and in more settings, set reference frame to absolute which is the best practice when the simulation involves MRF zones. Click OK to close the hybrid initialization pop-up. Now click on Initialize. Once the initialization is done, save the case and data file as initial files as shown. Now click on Run Calculations. We will keep all the default values and calculate the simulation results for 5000 iterations.
the solution is complete. Looking at the residuals, we can see that the residuals have not fallen below the set criteria for checking convergence. Also, the report monitors are oscillating about a mean value. This is due to the complexity of the model and the transient nature of the flow. To ensure that it is indeed a physics issue and not a numerical issue, we can check the mass balance across the domain. Click on Fluxes under the Results tab, select Inlet and Outlet and click Compute. As can be seen here, the net flux is far less than mass flux at the inlet or outlet. So we can safely say that the numerical algorithm has satisfactorily solved the simulation and the lack of convergence and oscillating residuals that are being observed are due to the inherent transient nature of the problem. Note that for such simulations, it is recommended to use the steady state solution as an initial condition and perform transient simulation afterwards to obtain the necessary data. We will not be discussing that in this course. Let us now move on to look at how to post process the results of the solution in the next lesson. Let's summarize what we have learned in this lesson. We started the lesson by discussing the problem statement at hand that is needed to set up the problem. Then we discussed how to enter reference values, choose viscous models, set up MRF zones and give proper boundary conditions to the model. Later, we discussed how to create report definitions for lift and drag coefficients and how to initialize the solution. Finally, we learned how to check for convergence of the solution. That brings us to the end of this lesson.